Hey, let's continue building the attributes plus custom code to feed external data inside a collection list. Let's recap what we built on the previous video. This is an example where we have a, some data that is coming from the fake store API, which is a free API that returns uh, fake products data that looks like this. And we're using the JavaScript API from attributes to feed that data inside the collection list. So this collection list is able to be sorted like this, is able to be paginated like this. And now what we want to do is dynamically create all the filters so we can also filter this, this list. So yeah, let's make a recap also on the code. On the code previously, we created, uh, we fetched the, the instance and then we fetched some data like the template element, we fetched the external data and we used this all together to create the new items and add them inside the collection list instance. So now we have already this in place. So let's move along. Now we're going to be accessing the JavaScript API from CMS filter because we will need this to populate and sync the radio buttons um, that we'll be adding here. So in this case, we will, we, we will need to access the CMS filters instance that it's created. This instance, uh, the same as that happened with CMS load, this instance contains some methods and properties that we need. So in this case, let's just continue where we left in the code. We don't need to do this, but let's again say CMS push, uh, we have FS attributes push, and we will refactor this at the end of the video, but for now, let's just keep it inside this. So no worries, we can just say push inside here, but now instead of pushing a callback for CMS load, we want to push a callback for CMS filter. And the second argument, this will be a function that now it does not return list instances, but instead it returns filters instances like this. And this is a CMS filters array. Cool. So it will be pretty similar as uh, uh, what we did before. We let's define the tasks and this will be first, we need to get the filters instance, same as that we did. Then we want to get the template element. So we want to say, get the radio template element, which will be this radio here. So we want to query this element. We also need to query the parent because we need some place where to add the radios. So we'll also add this test. We'll say get the parent element of the radios. Then we need to remove the template element because we don't want that in place. So let's say remove the template radio element. Then we want to collect all the categories of the products like this. And then we want to create new filter radio, let's say radio filters for each category. And lastly, when well, also, and append them in the pattern wrapper, because we want all the radios in the same place. And lastly, we want to sync the CMS filters instance to read the new filters data. In this case, we need to tell CMS filters, hey, we created these new filters, be aware of them, please use them to filter the data. So cool, let's start with this one. This one is gonna be very similar to what we did before. So we just get the first um, instance. We'll get just the first instance because we just have one instance. In this case, it's the, the form uh the filters so just one then if you have multiple you could always use find to find your own instance then let's get the radio template element in this case we'll just query selector it so we'll just say 
that the filters radio template element wow this is a long name it's um we could use document like this to make the choir selector but actually let's make it cooler <laughs> inside the cms filters instance also we have some methods and properties that we can use and one of these is the actual form element so this form element that we defined for cms filter here so cms filter element filters it's already stored in memory so we can access it so instead let's instead of saying document let's say filters instance form like this cool and this will be data element probably filter let me check this is data element filter cool great so now we have this and let's tell typescript that this is an html label element like this great again we are using typescript so it will complain that maybe this element does does not exist on the page so let's make sure that it exists by saying that if the template element does not exist we'll just whoops return from this current function great okay cool so now we need the parent element of this radio button to be able to populate it with the new radius that we create so in this case we'll just say filters wrapper element like this and we'll take the filters radio template element and we'll fetch the parent element like this and i think that this can also be null so let's say that if the wrapper element does not exist also let's return from this function to avoid any yeah any bugs okay cool so now we need to remove the template radio element we can just use regular remove right yeah let's say filters radio template element and we can just remove this this is not specific to attributes this is a regular javascript method that you can use on yeah html elements cool so we have the template we've removed it now let's collect all the categories of the products so let's create another function here let's say collect collect categories and what this is going to take is the array of products that we already fetched before and what we want to do is go one by one in the products and we want to check the category but we we don't want to duplicate the categories because you can see here for example that we have multiple products having men's clothing so men's clothing here men's clothing men's clothing we just want to create one single radio we don't want to create a lot of radios so we need to make sure that this is unique and for that we can create a set so let's say categories and this will be a set of the category definition so let's just say category and this will be the new set that we create cool the set will make sure that every value that we pass to it is unique and it's not duplicated so now we can loop through the uh all the products like this and we can say that for each product we can add it to the category set like this product uh nope not the product but actually the category inside the product yep so now we've added these categories inside the set the set has made sure that they are unique they are not repeated and now we can just return this instead of returning in the set let's return an array let's make the structure in here so it's simpler to work with uh later and this will be collects a unique records of each category of the product cool okay so now we can just use this so let's say here categories and this will be collect categories and let's pass the products you can see now why I nested this inside here because we want to access the context of yeah we want to access the the variable that holds all the products we'll refactor this in a second but for now it works so that's fine so we have already here you can see that typescript is happy with us it's showing that we have an array of categories 
So we can move along and now we can create the new radio filters for each category. And again, let's make this clean. Let's create another function. Let's say create filter. And this will be a function that very similar to the creating the new items. So this will be um, taking the category like this product category and again a template element and this will be a not a div element sorry this is a label element actually like this whoops fixed cool okay and let's break down the tasks here again we just need to um, clone the template element We want to query the inner elements and we want to populate the inner elements and that's it. So you can see that this is looking a lot like the method that we used for creating the new items. It's basically the same. So let's do it. Let's say that the new filter will be the template element cloned. So let's clone the node and let's clone it dip and let's make sure that TypeScript knows that this is a label element. So label element like this. Cool. Great. And let's query the inner element. So we can say um, the radio buttons, they have both the label and the input. In this case, this is not a label. This is a span. So we can say that the label, it's no filter dot query selector. And this is actually a span. Waffle lies to us. This should be called span and not label. And the input, not in it, sorry. The input is also the new filter. Let's query selector. And we know that it's an input. Cool. But TypeScript will complain about that. So we need, we need to make sure that the, yeah, that the code returns if any of these elements is missing. So we'll just say that if there is no label or there is no input, just return like this because we, yeah, something broke here. So we don't want to use it. Um, okay. So we just need to populate this. Let's say that the label, we want to add the text content to be the category and the input, we want to add the value to also be the category, but also let's add a, an ID. Probably we want to make sure that the IDs are unique. So let's say input dot ID. And this will be the category. Now let's make this a little bit more. Let's say uh, radio and the category. Cool, like this. So this is unique. Cool. So now we can just return the new filter like this. Great. Let's make a small comment here. Let's say creates a new filter radio radio filter element from the template plus external data. Cool. Great. Okay. So we're almost done. We now need to loop through the categories. Cons for each category of the categories. We want to create a new filter and we want to append that new filter inside the wrapper element that we had. So in this case, let's say uh, the new filter will be create the filter and we need to pass the category. We need to pass the filters radio template element and this will return a new filter or maybe not because remember that if something is missing, we'll return. So in this case, we'll say that if something went wrong, so the new filter does not exist, we'll just continue with the loop and but not use this one. So now we can come here and say filters wrapper element. We want to append this new filter. Cool. So we created a new filter and we appended it under the uh, wrapper element. That's it. Now we just need to tell CMS filters, hey, we created new filters. Please use them. Please read the data from them and use them when filtering. And for that, we have a really cool method that you can use that it's called um, store filters data. You can find it here in the documentation. This is basically going to 
rescan again all the filters, all the form, and if something new, uh, if, if it finds something new, it's just going to use it. So in this case, we'll say filters instance store filters data like this. Great, that's it. Actually, I think we're ready. So let's check it out. I think that we can already come here. Let's load this and let's wait for a second. This API is a little bit slow because it's free, it's public. We don't mind about this. Let's check if there is any error, but I'll leave there or not. Okay, cool. So the data is in place and look what's happened. So the mock element in here that we had actually was replaced for every single category that we have on the products. Let's try to use it and cool. So again, same as what happened with CMS load and uh, CMS sword, attributes already handles everything for us. So all the elements had the CMS filter field category in place, which is the one that we're using for connecting this specific uh, element with the filter. And also on the radio, we also had the CMS filter field category. So at the moment that we told CMS filter that, hey, please resync, restore all the elements, these elements had these attributes, so um, it knows that it has to use this data for filtering. We can reset the filters. Let's try to sort. Sorting is still working. And pagination is still working. So we're good. Actually, yeah, we can do one last thing, and it's uh, refactoring this code. Remember that I said that for now, I was nesting this inside of this callback of CMS load, but we can do a little bit better. We can do a little bit better because CMS filters has the list instance also stored inside. So in here, if we wanted to get the list instance, we just wanted to, we just needed to say that list instance, it's the filters instance dot list instance like this, or we can make it prettier and just destructor like this. So this way, instead of having to push two different callbacks, we can just push one where we get the filters instance and from the filters instance, we get the list instance. This is not mandatory. This is just something for convenience that you can use. Let's take all this data that we're using for CMS filter. Let's add it here outside. Let's change this method. And instead of pushing CMS load, let's push CMS filter. TypeScript will complain because this is not providing CMS lists, but instead it's providing CMS filters. Great. And now we want first to move this up. The reason is because we want to be able to access the list instance. We can get rid of the previous ones. We can rename this to filters instances. So now the code knows that this callback is accepting an array of CMS filters like this. We're getting the list instance. And we can just get rid of that, like this. Cool. I think we're ready. No longer we need the CMS list uh, type definition. We can just move this like that. And we're ready. Let's check it out. Okay. Less testing. Let's wait. By the way, this slowness won't happen in your projects. So this is just because, yeah, as I said at the time, time, sorry about that. This fake API, it's very slow. But if you have your own APIs, maybe you're pulling data from Airtable, from Notion, from a database of yourself, you're, yeah, this is just going to be a few milliseconds and not this amount of time. Okay, cool. Looks like everything is working as it should. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. So we can leave it this here. Remember that we are going to leave all the links in the description so you can just Follow along, you can check the readme of the project, you can check the published site, you can get all these documentation, you can also access the, the code that we wrote in the GitHub repo. And that's it. Leave any comments that you have, uh, leave likes if you like this, and also share it please. And thank you for watching. <laughs>